Today we've got to replace the mower belt. It's all torn up right in here, it's real. Hey, actually it wasn't. Uh, th this kind of has an interesting story. You shouldn't have to replace your mower belt very frequently. Um, it would be nice if I could just blame this on Christy because it actually totally gave up when, uh, you, I was were, mowing. when you were mowing. But this story actually goes back almost a year. So it's not my fault? Uh, no, it's not your fault. So the situation was, I, I think two years ago, we actually showed you our uh, mower mowing down the corn stalks. You remember that, Catrill? Yeah, that was pretty impressive. This situation has nothing to do with that video, but the next year when I mowed those stalks down, I had this brilliant idea that after I drove over them, I would just back up, okay? And when I backed up, corn stalks came up in here on the back side of the mower and bumped the mower belt off of the pulleys. Mm -hmm. And I had my three seconds of... I think it's smelling. <laughs> and so that's when I did the most damage to the belt. So it's been hanging on by, by, a thread. A, by a thread since then, hoping that maybe it would fail during mom's mowing. So you could blame her. Hey, yeah. that's not fair. No, you just almost voluntarily so you blamed yourself. You knew that this was going to happen, and you just let it happen. That's right. I was putting off the high dollar mower belt purchase until absolutely necessary. High dollar? How much is this thing? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much it costs. It's the mower. <laughs> that we need working, right? Yeah, but... It's gold-plated. Gold-plated. <laughs> see, the, see the gold right here? Yeah. What's your guess, Mom? Um, I'm guessing $75? I think that's pretty accurate, actually. Um, we got a little discount, of course. Uh, again, you can check our website for some of those discounts, and you can, you can get your own discount product, It's not too. stated on there. That really was a guess. Yeah. And I don't think she had looked at the no. bill, either. But I think that's pretty close. I try not to look at his bills and come from John Deere. It's just more wholesome for all of us that yeah. way. <laughs> when we took a quick look at this, we realized, oh my goodness, this is not going to be easy. This belt winds in and out under the gearbox here. It goes under these steps, so we've got to take all this apart to get the belt off. So this is somewhat unique. It's the stupid tax. This is the stupid tax. That's exactly right. This was entirely my fault. Once in a while, we just have to pay that tax. Thanks right? for owning up. The benefit is for all of our viewers because should you have to pay the stupid tax at some point, you'll get to see how to fix it right here. I can do it like this, but it's got so much grass caked under it. I wonder if we're going to hate doing this job. Look under there. It's, it's unbelievable. Why do you reckon it kicks so much long? Well, I think it's got those non-John Deere blades. Oh, it stinks. So this is my experiment with these gator blades um, with the mulch kit. I don't know if you can figure it out, but I'm not very impressed with it because just how cake this stuff has got. Uh, now this is just a few spring mowings on you know our small yard, so I did not see nearly this much cake uh, caked up grass with the John Deere mulching blades. So these gator blades may just be fabulous. A lot of people really brag on them. They may be great when you don't have the mulch kit, but I believe. What I'm seeing so far is that with the mulch kit, the mulch specific blades are the best choice. Now, unfortunately, I don't know of any non John Deere brand blades that have the shape of the mulch kit blades at all. They appear bent in here instead of straight, and I think that provides them some different aerodynamics, which help a lot with this. But I'm just not going to wash my blade or wash my deck every single time I mow. I know there's people who do, but I don't have time and this stuff is very corrosive on the deck that's why people do clean it out after every single mowing we try to mow when it's dry yeah but it's really hard to do so in this it's... time of year now everybody online has got an idea about what you can put under your deck to prevent this either put some sort of liner like truck bed liner spray you can put under here there's uh, people that coat them with other things like graphite type paints or something. This is one of the nastiest jobs that I ever do. I don't see any way to keep from doing this without getting sprayed right back in my face. Now the way I try to go about this job is I try to get it all wet and let it soak a little bit. And the more it soaks, then it's, it's, I can come back later, like you know, a minute or two later, and then I can uh, put the high pressure to it and it comes more after to come off. So I get the whole thing wet, let it soak, I come back and try to wash it off. If it doesn't come off right then, I come back a minute or so later again.
Johnny, how do you feel about getting a bath? Yeah, I, I don't really like it either, you know. You especially. better like it, Johnny, because look what it does to me. Yeah, but now you're all wet. Yep. I'm going to go change my shirt, maybe clean up a little bit here, and then we'll get on with our other projects. Okay, so we have to start by taking these drive over ramps off. This belt simply will not come up high enough to come off of the pulley without taking the drive over ramps off. This is a 13 millimeter socket that I've got and it's a carriage head bolt. There's two of them, one here, one here. And hopefully that will allow us to take the ramp off. I may have to get a longer ratchet, but I believe that one works. This is a nylon topped lock nut, like we've discussed before on the channel. It's got the little nylon ring so that they don't have to put a lock washer on it. So it kind of comes off a little harder than some other nuts. Now with that, it just came right up. So Christy, I think maybe for my corn stalks, I need a little tougher mower. I don't know. He's asking for more money again. Well, viewers, don't you think I need a better mower to mow those corn stalks down? Wait, wait. How big of a plot is the corn patch? Like, well, so what kind of other mower would you want? I a combine? Want, I would want a rotary cutter, rear-mounted rotary cutter. I actually know what that is. There's several brands that make them. We're looking into it, see if we can actually find one. I have to either get approval from the finance committee or figure out some other way to get a hold of one. Okay, the other drive over ramp is up. Okay, so now we have to take the belt out from under all this auto connect mess. We've got to remove it all the way down here. So there's two bolts down here, and we also have to remove this whole gearbox. There, I got that one. You just gotta get angrier, Dad. Yeah, that's usually the case. To get more determined. Looks like there was just a little bit of glue or something put in there. That ensure would explain they, why they were so difficult to take off. Ensure why ensure they didn't come out, see? Mm. Still not quite got enough here. Man, I just had to get more serious. One over here. That's kind of an odd place to put a nut. Well, it, it actually came loose much easier. Hey Dad. Pepsi delivery's here. Look at that, we got Pepsi's for my new refrigerator. That's not your refrigerator, Dad. <laughs> Actually, you probably bought it. But it was in my room. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. <laughs> That's true. Johnny may be fueled by diesel, but Tim is fueled by Diet, Diet Pe Pepsi. And cheeseburgers. And cheeseburgers. Diet Pepsi and cheeseburgers. So let's look in here. We got these two bolts here we're going to take off. This extension really helps on this. Otherwise, you'd have to be working around that uh, shaft. So this is where it connects to the tractor? Yes, this is the shaft where the auto connect connects to. This is the drive pulley right here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take the tension off of this spring so we can so we can remove this idler. I'm going to slide a straight braid screwdriver in there and work its way out like this. So I've got that wedged right against there, and then I'm just going to go like that. Now this is going to be stressful here in a moment when it pops out. So I'm trying to be a little bit gentle with it to see if I can keep that from being too dramatic. In this case, the idler is jammed up against the mower because it had been sprung. Yeah. That spring pulled it tight and pulled it fast, so it's actually stuck against this steel here. It was spinning when that happened, see? Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to give it a little tap tap. And now you can bring the camera around here and actually see the damage that happened during that time. I suspect it'll be worth our effort to put a little touch-up paint on that. Not for looks reasons, but to keep that from rusting. Mm. Can you get the belt under that? I was hoping maybe I could. I'm going to be able to get the old one off. We'll see if I can get the new one on. Dad, are you sure you're a good enough artist for this? Uh, my artistic skills are not high, but I don't think artistic skills are necessary for this. That paint matches well, though. Yeah, this Rust-Oleum brand paint. We'll put a link to it in our description. We may have to take this whole pulley off with uh, by taking this snap ring off and lifting it up. But in normal, lazy tractor time with Tim fashion, We'll try to get it done without having to do that. Yeah, we don't want to do any extra work if we can help it. So we'll see if we can get this just to slide under there. There we go. Nice. Pretty certain it needs to go around here. This goes over here. Around 
here, around here, and then the gearbox. Get the belt on here. Get it back down in there. Get him in? Okay, here comes a screwdriver. Oh, can you hold him? Yeah, I can hold him with the screwdriver. Very disconcerting angle. You have. Every angle is fine when you're doing that kind of thing. Okay. I'll just as I can get it like that. Mm -hmm. Should be two bolts back here. Of course, I knew what kind of glue or whatever they used. There should be two other bolts control for the front one. Yeah, you have to kind of help. We tend not to use the air impact wrench on this channel very often, and the reason is not because we don't like it or anything, but we're usually wanting to talk to each other and to talk to you on the video, and the noise of the air compressor and the air wrench itself uh, just take away from that. So I'm, we're not saying to avoid using an air impact wrench, uh, but, but there's also, for something like this, it's a little bit of detailed work, so you really, you know, it's not like there's that much uh, to do. I'm using a 15 millimeter gear wrench for this now pretty handy to get into a spot like this. There's actually two different types of gear wrench. This particular one that we've got is straight. And the straight one is the simplest mechanically because if you want to change directions between loosening and tightening, all you have to do is turn the wrench around like that. The other style is curved right in here. Mm -hmm. This part is curved. And in order to make the curve work, they actually have a little lever so that you can switch directions of the ratchet. And that way you can use the curve either way, but still be tightening and loosening. So it's a more expensive design. Uh, there's sometimes the straight ones actually work better, and sometimes the curved ones actually work better. Hmm. Okay, is everything tight? Okay, so next up is attaching that spring, and that's got a long way to go, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm hooked right there. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I get up far enough, my screwdriver is going to come loose, except that I might be able to get hooked right in there. There we go. So I kept the screwdriver way down there, hooked in there. That's what's going to allow it to work. And that looks like it'll... I think we're going to be able to put it right in there. Nice. That worked like a champ, didn't it? Yeah, it did. We'll put a link to the lock and lube in the description. This thing is really amazing. It's just so easy. You don't... You know, there's no way I'm pulling upward on it here and there's no way it comes loose. Uh, we want grease on these shafts, on these spindles, so that it won't wear in there. So we put the, we lock it on there. See, if you don't have the lock and lube, sometimes the grease, you have to hold it down real tight to keep the, the coupler onto the grease fitting. Mm -hmm. But with this, you don't have to hold it at all. Now I've got some new lock and lube products I want to show you in another video. I don't have it on this. Uh, but actually, they make a longer lock and lube, and I have one. I'll show that to you in a separate video at some point. But I really think the lock and lube is, is a very nice product. It's $29.95. Got a link to it on our website. Great value. Take a look. John Deere's done a good job of putting something in here to keep these bolts held up. I've got these little washers on top. That really makes it easier for the carriage bolts. I never had to take those out. Well, this project has actually gone much easier than I expected. It, it, yeah, it was a little bit cumbersome to have to take that off, but it all came off easy, and it, it made, a, made good sense as to how it went back together and everything like that. Definitely a project you should be able to do yourself. Don't see any reason why you couldn't. But I would recommend not backing into something and, and getting stuff come right back up through your belt. So maybe you won't ever have to do this project. Who knows? You just have things go wrong once in a while. Don't, don't let it get to you. Just realize it's going to be something actually fun to fix. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's kind of cool to see how it all fit together. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Take a look at our website. We'll have some more details on this. We have a link to the lock and loop, several other links that are interesting to you. Uh, so our website's tractortimewith10.com. Press the like button. Subscribe. subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with 10. The problem is getting it going. It, <laughs> yep. it does work better. Okay, Katrina, your turn. My turn. Alright, it's been a long time.
we go. See, this thing didn't cost that much anyway because now we've got a multi-purpose. 